Yo, what is poppin' people? It's your boy Out of Order. Welcome back to the channel. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, I'm gonna be doing a Cinema 4D tutorial. This, so, this tutorial is just gonna be covering the basics on how to move in Cinema 4D, how to place objects, how to make materials, how to render, and just all that sort of stuff. Just the basics and stuff we wanna know. I'm mainly just gonna be covering the basics in this tutorial, so yeah. So let's just get right into it. So Cinema 4D, the program may look intimidating, but it's really not that hard to learn. So first, let's start off with navigating the software. So navigating the software is really easy. If you hold down one on your keyboard and drag click with your mouse, you can move around. If you hold two on your keyboard and drag click with your mouse, you can zoom in. And then if you hold three on your keyboard, you can revolve. Now you can do the same thing in this corner up here, in this corner right here. You can drag to move around here, you can zoom in here, and then you can revolve with this button. But uh, I like to use 1, 2, and 3 to move around. So this right here, if you middle mouse click, this is going to be like your workspace, like your canvas of where all your uh, 3D objects are going to go into. So here's your render view. And so let me just spawn a cube right here. So as you can see, if we got a cube here. Uh, this cube right here, if you middle mouse click, we can see it through all dimensions and you can resize it too. So if we uh, resize it here, you can see like what dimensions are being affected. Uh, you can also resize it here too by typing in actual numbers. So if I type in, let's say 100 by 300, oops, 100 by 300 by 500 you'll see that the cube will look like that. You can also do more than a cube. If you hold click on the software, you can uh, select any of these objects right here. And keep in mind that all these objects can be modeled into everything. So this cube can be modeled into basically anything, all right? And you'll be using these tools here, but I'll cover that in another tutorial. For now, we're just gonna be sticking to the basics. So as you can see right here with this cube, we can also create a cylinder as well. We can create a cone, uh, a capsule, and, and yeah, like I said, all these objects can be modeled into other things. So that's cool and all, but uh, I'm going to be showing you what everything does right now. So this right here is your modeling stuff. This right here is what you're going to be using to model things. This right here is like your uh, your movement stuff, like your object stuff, like your rotation and your, your rotation tool, your scale tool and such. Uh, this right here is for your rendering stuff. So if I click here, you'll see that it'll render a preview, but we don't have anything on our canvas. And then this right here is your objects and some of your effectors you have on them. So I'm going to be creating a basic render in this tutorial. It shouldn't be too hard, too complicated. Uh, you guys can follow along if you want. So we're just going to be creating a basic render of some text. So if you go to MoGraph, MoText, we can create some 3D text. And I'm just going to title this tutorial. So you can also change the depth on the text. You can also change the font as well too. So I'm going to pick a bold font right here and I'm going to make the depth a little bit higher. So we'll go like this maybe. And this area over here, this area over here that I'm selecting right now, this is kind of like your project bin. Like so if for those of you guys that use After Effects, this right here is going to be your project bin. This is where all your objects are going to be shown and listed on. And then down here in this area is where all your materials are going to be. So if we create a material by going into create new material, we can create basically textures or objects or basically whatever materials your objects are going to be made of. So for example, if we want the text to be red, we can create the color and make the, make the material red and then just drag it onto our tutorial text. And there we go. Now we have red text. Now, if we click this button up here, this will render this out. And as you can see, our render looks pretty basic. It look, doesn't look that cool. So we're going to make it look cool by spicing it up a little bit. So I'm going to add a floor. And what this floor will do is it'll create an infinite plane. And I'm going to create another floor, except this one I'm going to rotate by going into down here, putting 90 on here, 90 on here as well, and 90 on the last one. So all 90s, and then we're going to drag this back here, and this will be an infinite plane as well. So if we click the render button, you'll see that we have a little basic render. So as cool as the render looks and all, I want it to look more realistic. So I'm going to be showing you how to add lighting. How to so I'm going to be showing you how to add lighting and ambient occlusion and global illumination. I'll explain what those are in a little bit, but right now let's just add a let's just add a basic light by clicking this light bulb. And then we have an infinite light, an area light, and a spotlight, and a normal omni light. Um, 
Now I'll probably make a whole separate tutorial video on lighting itself, but uh, for now we're just going to create an Omni light. So by clicking the light button if we drag this light around, and then you can move the object around with these little tools right here. So this will bring, this will move this axis, this will move this axis, and this will move the other axis. And then like I said, move around with 1, 2, and 3 on your keyboard. So that looks cool and all, except I want it to look more realistic. So to make it look more realistic, we're going to need to edit the render settings. So this right here is your renderer. If you click this gear icon right up here, this will bring you to your render settings. Now there are different types of renderers. There's, um, there's Octane, there's Redshift, I believe. And uh, there's a few other ones that are paid. I'm just using the physical default one. And so what I like to add for all my renders 100% of the time is go to Effect ambient occlusion and then just leave everything on default and effect and global illumination now unless you're using a NASA computer you want to turn down your global illumination to low unless you have a stolen NASA supercomputer you're gonna want to use low at most of the time I'd say like 90% of the time but uh, what this is is essentially ray tracing so if you know what ray tracing is you'll know how realistic it'll look so if we render this out you'll notice it looks a lot more realistic so as you can see, the ambient occlusion and global illumination make this look a million times more realistic. But uh, I want it to look cooler, so I'm going to delete the light. And I'm going to go into my material settings, go into color, down the luminance, and I'm going to make it glow red. So if we render this out, you'll notice our text is glowing now. So I want our text to glow with the light above it as well. And I want this right here, this these two floors to be, uh, I want them to be reflective. So to make them reflective, we're going to go to Create New, Material, go down to Reflectance, change the type from Reflection uh, Specular to Reflection Legacy, uh, lower the roughness, increase the Reflection Strength and the Specular Strength as well. And we're just going to drag the material onto our floors. So as you can see, now we have our reflection on. And if I render it out, you'll notice that the reflection is too bright. So we can either lower the reflection on the uh, material or lower the color as well. And then that'll make the reflection look more realistic. So let's say you spend about 30 minutes or so creating some cool text effects, you create some nice renders, you create some cool objects in 3D, and now you're wondering how do I save this as an image? Well to do that you go into your output, you can change the resolution. I usually do 2560 by 1440. And then frame rate, that doesn't matter because we're only going to be rendering one frame. And then over here at save, this is where you're going to choose where you want to save your file to. So I'm going to save it to my desktop and we'll just call this tutorial. And then format, you can change the file type. So I'm just going to render it as a PNG. And then to render it, you click this icon right here. So as you can see, we rendered it out completely and it should show up on my desktop now. But uh, that's going to be the end of this tutorial. I just wanted to cover the basics on this. I'll be going into much more detail in the future on other tutorials. I'll be doing it. I'll, I'll be explaining how to do lighting better. I'll be explaining how to model objects and how to create cool realistic renders and stuff. But uh, for now, that's the end of the tutorial, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll be making tutorials every week now. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'm out, dude. Peace.